Mr. Jaitley, we're at what I believe is uh, one of the most beautiful and serene and of course uh, uh, a place that draws the respect from millions of people, the Golden Temple Complex. It is of course beautifully uh, refurbished, almost unrecognizable. You're back to Amritsar, which has of course personal and political significance for you. So first your thoughts on, on, on that in an election year especially. Well, I've rarely city, seen a city being redone in this manner. Today, I think there's a complete transformation of this historical and religious city. You have the Golden Temple Complex, uh, 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 which already was a star attraction for the city. And I think the kind of facilities which have been added, the technology that has been introduced, uh, I think the world is going to come here. And then this whole area, which becomes a heritage zone, uh, in a short span, the government has completely transformed it. It's become unrecognizable. The city itself, roads, parks, highways, facilities, I think it's seen a huge improvement in recent years. In fact, in the recent uh, tally of the smart cities, mm. uh, Amritsar got added and mm. it got the first position all India. Mm. And I think that is the right position because the kind of work that's been done here. Now, of course, this plaza, the you know, the walk through, the fact that it's now pedestrians only, no cars, the new facades. This is a, a, a Kali leader Sukhbir Badal's pet project, your ally. Uh, the opposition would, of course, say this is timed to the elections. How would you, how would you respond to that? Well, I think there is a big change in Punjab which has taken place, and that's a point I've been making through the course of the day today. We, we are having 50 years of Punjab. What did the first 30 years see, which was the Congress domination years? You saw the emergency. Punjab faced a war, 1971. Mm. Then you saw terrorism, then you saw repeated use of Article 356, then you saw Blue Star, and then you had the wounds, which continued till the mid-90s. The last 20 years have been really the Badal domination years. 15 out of 20 years, Mr. Badal has been the Chief Minister. And now you have a lot of those wounds being cured. And today, I think we've transformed into developmental politics. Hmm. Of course, the Golden Temple is of great significance uh, for Punjab. And therefore, uh, uh, maintaining and glorifying its heritage is important. But at the same time, uh, it's a place which will bring Punjab onto the global map once again by the sheer amount of work it's being done. Of course, works are done uh, and they speed up when elections are due. But then none of the governments in the past thought of doing it. It's all credit to Sukhbir that he decided to do it and he achieved it. And of course the point you're making is that the Golden Temple is of course beyond identity politics, beyond petty po party politics. It's a symbol of this country's religiosity, it's a symbol of this country's history, it's a symbol of uh, its heritage, its culture. And I think therefore it's a place which has sanctity for people of all communities uh, uh, as far as Golden Temple is concerned. So glorifying it, beautifying the whole complex, uh, making it one of the most attractive destinations in the country. I see this complex, I haven't seen a complex like this anywhere in India. And I'm sure if this Amritsar Golden Temple Heritage Complex uh, is replicated by other cities, by other chief ministers, irrespective of parties in their major cities, I think it will be a great achievement. Now, we're standing in Amritsar, of course, which for you in 2014 did not go well electorally. Many people believe that you paid the price for the anger against the Akalis. Today, as the Akalis, your allies face 10 years of that anti-incumbency. Do you honestly believe that this election does not make your alliance, uh, in a sense, the, the coalition on the back foot? Do you at least acknowledge it, it, that you're entering it, this election it, on the back it foot? It doesn't at all. It doesn't at all. First of all, you must realize that the Akali-BJP alliance has a lot of social significance. From Blue Star to the 84 killings to the to terrorism. I think in the last 20 odd years, this alliance served the social purpose in Punjab. It helped Punjab get out of all those tensions and look ahead. And therefore, for us, this election is <coughs> this alliance is not merely about this election, it sees far more. I, and I think this election, this alliance will stay come what may. Secondly, there's, no, there's no friction in secondly, it. Secondly, secondly, after two terms you do face an anti-incumbency. But we are facing a highly divided anti-incumbency. You have the Aam Aadmi Party, 
which showed some promise. And I think the Aam Aadmi Party has been found out. Hmm. Its leadership also has been found out. You're talking about what's happening in Delhi, where you he see, says you actually don't let him govern. Delhi, his performance, I put it, is the worst government in local Delhi city since independence that I have seen. And he would argue that's because you don't let him govern. No, I, you I meaning not I, you, Mr. Jaitley, but the centre. Didn't uh, Mr. Madanlal Khurana govern? Didn't Mrs. Sheila Dixit govern when they had contrarian governments in the centre? Isn't Mamta Banerjee governing? Is there, isn't Pinari Vijayan, uh, Vijayan governing? After all, isn't Nitish Kumar governing? Isn't Akhilesh governing? Now, these are all contrarian governments, but they are doing whatever they can in their states. Uh, I think the problem with the Aam Aadmi Party is it doesn't want to govern. It wants to live by a daily controversy. And I think uh, 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 the, the, the style of the party is such, it's been found out by the people in Delhi. It's been found out in anticipation by the people in Punjab and therefore it climaxed and I think it's uh, it's heading for a big fall. The Congress all over the country is a spent force. It's trying to uh, do its best uh, in Punjab, but it's faction ridden and so on. And I'm quite certain that uh, uh, Punj the Akali BJP government will see an opposition amongst a section of people. We have our own strong support base. That base will remain. And I'm reasonably confident uh, that this divided anti-incumbency will is going to see us through. Who do you see as the main opposition? <coughs> you see, some weeks ago I could say it was the Aam Aadmi Party. Today I think the Aam Aadmi Party is going down very rapidly. So it's, it's, it's a divided. I'm a little confused. Let's talk a little bit about Amrinder Singh. He defeated you in 2014. But there seems to be a lot of bad blood between the two of you. And the reason I say this is, in an interview to me, he suggested that some of the investigations against his son by the Enforcement Directorate or the black money uh, investigations into Praneet Kaur, which she denies she has overseas accounts, he said to me, Mr. Jaitley can't uh, forgive me for the electoral defeat and this is all being guided by him and I put this down in a letter. He's actually accused you of vindictiveness. I think it's, it, it's not only an incorrect statement, it's a fraudulent statement. He knows it very well that the details from about his family members allegedly having accounts abroad came to the government of India not in 2014 or 15, but in 2011. So it was when Mr. Pranab Mukherjee was the finance minister that the first information about the Patiala family members having accounts in Swiss bank accounts came to the government of India. Correspondence went on. You had another finance minister, Mr. Chidambaram, in between. These investigations came in. These reports have appeared in the media in 2011 and 12 that it was alleged that the family members had some mm. uh, monies abroad. Now, it's a different matter than when our government came to power in 2014 after the black money law was enacted, we've speeded up investigations, not only again in this case, but in hundreds of other cases where we've received information. Mm -hmm. And since we've speeded up all those investigations, uh, obviously the details are coming in. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it has nothing to do with the political election of 2014. I didn't advise his family members to allegedly have an account internationally. And you're standing by the fact that his wife and his son are being you investigated see, I, for I, that? I, I, it's not being investigated. There's a criminal complaint in court now. It's for the court to decide. How would you describe Captain Amrinder Singh's uh, prospects in this election, given that you have competed with him in a Lok Sabha <coughs> election? You see, uh, I wish him all the very best. Uh, uh, I really don't want to make any comment uh, uh, on uh, his prospect or what happens within their party. But let us remember, he's an absentee MP in Parliament. He's an absentee M MP in Amritsar. Therefore, his current responsibilities, both in Parliament and his constituency, he isn't discharging. I hope he does better in future. Talking about Amritsar, Navjot Sidhu used to be a friend of yours, did not campaign for you in Amritsar, has now walked out. Nobody quite knows what he's going to do next. He <coughs> accuses the Akalis of running a mafia. He's particularly ta targeted Mr. Majithia. How do you see the loss of Navjot Sidhu? What do you think happened and how do you feel about it? Is it a personal well, loss really, to you? He used to be a friend of yours. Well, I certainly think uh, it's a personal loss. I have no hesitation in doing so. I think... Uh, he was, if he had taken politics seriously, he was cut out for serious politics. He had his own uh, strength. He had his own charisma. Uh, but he must remember, I wish him all the luck wherever he goes. 
that he switched sides once. And now, politics is also about ideologies and, and principles. Politics is not about opening a bargaining counter and saying, who gives me a better price? And you're saying that's what he's done? The reports seem to be very disturbing. The reports seem to suggest, that's the media, and I hope the media reports are not correct, that it's a completely non-ideological politics. Whoever gives me a better importance, I'll join that person. Ideology doesn't mean anything to me. You said it's a personal loss. Is it also a political loss? Well, if a colleague loses you, you feel sad about it. Would you That's want him I'll to say. come back? Well, I think he's gone far ahead. And he's also demonstrated, uh, when I use the word absentee MP, I think uh, he may also have a lot to answer on that score. Let's talk about, in the end, something that concerns everybody in Punjab. There's a border here that adjoins Pakistan. As you know, from Jammu and Kashmir, the border is aflame. Uh, there are repeated 60 ceasefire violations by Pakistan since the surgical strikes. Uh, here too, the border villages, the farmers were worried in the initial days when a civilian evacuation was ordered as a precautionary measure. Mr. Jetty, how do you see this tension at the India-Pakistan border in a state like Punjab and the adjoining state of Jammu and Kashmir? No, no, it's a very serious matter for us. And it's serious because it's not only the border tension. Pakistan allowed its territory to be used for insurgency within India. And they had not one but umpteen incidents. Pathan Court was a big incident. Uri was a big incident. And of course now, we've suffered enough in silence. We've suffered enough taking just some diplomatic initiatives and so on. I think the times have now changed. And the government of India has a more proactive approach. <coughs> and the more proactive approach is that if you indulge in terrorism in India, or if you kill people across the border, then there is a cost involved and you'll have to pay a price for it. I think that policy of the government of India is extremely evident and it's uh, showing itself. But some would say we are paying a price too, our civilians, see, our soldiers, our jawans. You see, you, in a conf you were, as it is paying a price, yes. we paid a price in Uri, we paid a price in Patan Court, but it was a one-sided price. Today, the cost that Pakistan has to pay is far heavier and Pakistan is in a very precarious situation as far as their own governance, as far as their own democracy, as far as their own uh, civilian-military relationships are concerned. And therefore, the costs involved on in Pakistan are going to be extremely severe. Do you see that as an election issue here in Punjab? Because everybody here has either history with Pakistan, a pre-partition history, or well, a I hope it doesn't, at the border. I, I hope it doesn't become an election issue. Because uh, these issues relate to the sovereignty of the country. And in sovereignty, everybody should speak the same language. But if somebody chooses uh, uh, to speak a contrary language, it's only then that it becomes an issue. Otherwise, if everybody speaks the same language, it's a national issue, then it's not an election issue. Are you worried about the 2003 ceasefire now effectively, at least for the moment, being You over? see, the 2003 ceasefire was being violated by Pakistan. Yeah. After all, what is terrorism? You train people, you smuggle people in, they indulge in terrorism. It was being violated. Today, it's become uh, uh, what was a de facto violation taking place by them. It's literally become a de jure violation. By so them. no let up in our position of retaliation, well, I, aggression, I don't, I don't, a harder I, line. I don't deal with this subject, but I can only... But a new doctrine, a new normal? But I think the new normal is that India doesn't accept the fact that Pakistan can keep sending terrorists and keep inflicting injury on India. If they do that, the costs are going to be much higher. Last question, since you're an election analyst and a syphologist, if you could remove yourself from being a, a protagonist in this election, what would be your forecast for this election? And what is the biggest electoral liability for the Akalis? Is it sheer anti-incumbency? Is it the drugs issue that all the opposition has, well, uh, in I a think, sense, focused uh, I think, on? I think it's a, it's, it's a problem, but it's being uh, uh, politicized uh, excessively. It need not have been. It's the a social issue. issue. It's the a social issue. issue. It's a social issue. Which because some Akali society. leaders have also been accused of I think, it. I think if you're in power for two terms, people then look at a change. But if you've done exceedingly well, then people don't look for a change. And I can tell you today, the kind of developmental activity this government has done in Punjab, the kind of uh, social cohesion that it has brought in Punjab, and the kind of roadmap that it has set in a border state in Punjab is commendable. And therefore, I do believe that this government does deserve another chance. And your forecast? Well, I think it's too early to suggest. 
I think uh, the Akali BJP would be in the lead because you have a very badly divided uh, opposition. Well, from the beautiful Golden Temple complex, pleasure Thank talking you. to you, sir. Thank you.